We are here today with Keisha Reed, yes. and she is the Opportunity Navigator here at Derpy Innovation Society. All right, and this is one of the spots uh, we're going to be bringing students to on the tour. So yes. tell me a little bit about Derpy Innovation Society. What, what is it? What's it for? Yeah, so uh, it's really an innovation hub. It was started and really thought of by Chris Lambert, who is the founder and CEO of Life Remodeled. We are also a nonprofit in the building. Um, we house over 35 different nonprofits and small businesses. Um, and it was made to be so and be in the neighborhood that we serve in the community that we serve on purpose. Um, we have lots of minority owned businesses, meaning women owned businesses, black owned businesses um, and nonprofits as well. So let me try to make sure I understand this. So yes. on your card, it says yes. uh, Life Remodeled. Yes. That's an organization. Yes. And then we have Durfee Innovation Society. Yes. What's the relationship there? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. So really, we at Life Remodel, there's about three of us that work on the Durfee Innovation Society side of Life Remodeled, but we are one. So we are caregivers to the building, and that's our role that we have here. But then we also are a nonprofit, so then we have a bookkeeper. We also have um, a COO, right? So some of those things that you actually have to have in an organization to thrive and survive. Um, and we also have those challenges as a small nonprofit. Um, so we understand what that feels like, and we can you know relate to our tenants as well. Yeah. Um, but anything to do with the building, um, any connections that need to be made, that's my job. Yeah. Um, and then Brandy Haggins is our director, and she makes sure to have the tenants who are doing the same thing and like-minded folks um, in the building as well. So. so the Durfee Innovation Society is a project of Life Remodel. Absolutely. So this is the model for what we want to see, not only in Detroit, who are those uh, blight and um, abandoned school buildings, mm -hmm. but also to be the model and take it nationwide. Okay, so yeah. you have an idea about scaling this thing yes. and revitalizing Absolutely. communities, revitalizing That's neighborhoods by being a hub that brings these different activities together and these different nonprofits yes. and businesses. Yes, that's exactly what Life Remodel does. Um, and so that is our nonprofit within the building, but this happens to be one of the buildings and the first one of many uh, to come. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, if you could give me a, a, a look at I a little bit of what's to. going on here. We'll look at a few different spaces. I would love to. I love the building, so please stop me if I get a little too much. But uh, it's a, a former uh, middle school. Mm. Um, so uh, pretty cool when you think about it, just how large a scale we're talking. This was a big middle school. 176,000 square feet. Oh, God. Um, all the classrooms are former classrooms. We call them suites. Um, that's where our tenants are now, um, and so they range in size of, you know, closet size to, you know, thousands of square feet. All right. Yeah. All right, well, let's, um, but let's, take, let's a take a look. Let's take a look. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So how long have you been here at, at uh, Life Remodel? I've been here for about a, almost a year and a half, hmm. um, and so former uh, classroom teacher. Mm. Um, and uh, taught fifth grade for some time and then uh, moved on to be a community liaison and came here so I just keep getting yeah. are, <laughs> larger in size with uh, the population for sure. Are you from yeah. Detroit originally? Ah uh, yes so not only am I from Detroit um, I uh, had many and unfortunately many uh, homes so I bounced around from here to here to here in the same neighborhood where mm. I serve. So wow. um, that was a joy to come yeah. back. Um, Life Remodel, we also do some blight removal. So we do six day project work. Mm. And so it's coming up in October. We love for volunteers to come out and sign mm. up and, and do that. Maybe those students can students do that. Look some students volunteer. That's, right. That's a good idea. Uh, so we love for that to, you know, to Is it happen. on a weekend? It's during a week, yeah. but, um, but you don't have to come for all the days, okay. right? All right? I'll give you some information before you go. Um, and so I just so happened to go to one of the homes in which uh, I was living. Oh, my goodness. And bald. 
softball, yeah. cried like a baby outside that time. Because, wow. you know, it, it meant something to be there. And the fact that it was on my list that I went to go see, it was amazing. And yeah. to clean up and to, to see folks that had never even been in the neighborhood before to, to do that, it was amazing. Yeah. So uh, we do it every year. Um, and again, that's part of Life Remodeled and who we are as a nonprofit. So, okay. Yeah. Now, I noticed this is the first time I came in. It's yeah. the donor wall. Huh? This is, the... is that what you notice? Because you know what I see? I see the old gym floor. Oh, wow. Ah, okay. But no, I, I, I understand. And this is really, really a, a key element to what makes this building work, right? Donations. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's it's staying to, to uh, okay. their, their gifts. Different levels. Yeah, uh -huh. right? And so um, an amazing thing to see. I have a lot of people that come take a picture of this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's amazing to see, especially those uh, Detroit-based, Michigan-based uh, organizations who believe in what we do. Yeah. You know, um, and that's what it takes. And there's still some space, so, you know. Okay, <laughs> if you yeah. know anybody. Maybe I can fill in somebody. <laughs> or maybe I can. Uh, you know somebody, uh, know somebody, you know somebody. Yeah, influence some people. <laughs> that's right. I know Steve Bomber. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, in, in addition to that, so we, we have many um, pathways that lead back here, right? Yeah. So we have the donor wall, and it means something, right? I would say, um, as a part of this community, this means something, as well as I'll show you another piece of artwork. This is a piece of artwork as well uh, that um, kind of touches me a little differently as well. Yeah. Um, we also have our 313 Ambassador Club. So they come, those are folks who um, believe in what we do uh, and they come and they'll give tours as well. And they bring in some of their friends that they know and they've rubbed elbows with to come help us out in our mission. So, yeah. okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Do you uh -huh. want to head in this way with yeah, me? Yeah, we can take a look at this. Yeah. So, uh, oh, wow. one of the grandest, <laughs> and pun intended, but one of the grandest spaces that we have. Yeah. Um, this is, and I did not make this word up, it is the cafetorium. Mm. Um, I didn't hear that before until I came <laughs> here, but it's on the door, so we know it's a word, right? Um, but we know that that's, you know, where kids, I have alum who come and they're, they were saying like, oh my gosh, I walked across that stage, I performed on that stage, I, I remember when my parents were sitting in the audience, I remember eating lunch in here, right? Um, and we're talking, the building was 1927, so I'm talking about students all the way, they're probably from 1927 to kids who, per, people who are 30s, in mm. their 30s now, right? Um, so amazing, yeah. amazing stories. Uh, the reliefs, everything, they're all original. Um, the sound panels and the flooring, um, and I found out the curtains are the things that we have changed over the years. Mm. So um, really great, and that's part of it. If it's, what's I'm saying? If it ain't broke, right? Don't, yeah. don't worry about it, don't fix it, because it's not broken, it's beautiful, um, and we don't wish to tear anything down. We wanna just restore it. Yeah. Um, part of this is the integrity of the building, right? Mm -hmm. What do we do with the buildings that are here? Yeah. Most importantly, it's the integrity of the community that we're in, right? Yeah. Well, how do we reach them and, and not make them feel a certain way also yeah. with our presence? So how do you use this space now? Oh gosh, it's amazing. So this is one of three community spaces that are available for rent. Mm. Um, and mm. so, uh, right? So yeah. I have witnessed Oh my gosh, uh, receptions, birthdays, uh, baby showers, fashion shows. Uh, the mayor was here, um, oh, yesterday as a matter of fact. Um, and he's been here a couple times. Uh, the governor was here. I mean, yeah. anything that you can think of, yeah. people have <clears throat> made So this it is part here. of what really makes it a hub for the community, like a, I don't want to say community center, but like a, yeah, a community I say, center. I say the same thing. People often ask me, is it a rec center? Absolutely not. I wouldn't, yeah. you know, classify us as that, but I would say a community center. I, I must agree. Yeah. Um, and again, we can go rent a hall anywhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you yeah. know the hall down the street, we, yeah. you know, okay, we could do that. This yeah. just gives a different vibe. Yeah. Um, and the fact that uh, we, we have such great rates. Um, and then as tenants of the building, they get to utilize the spaces that are here as well. Yeah. So that's a pretty amazing thing that you have this small office space, but you then you have this auditorium that you can, yeah. you can use for your, your events as well. So. Well, you know, it's interesting that you have these kind of community spaces, fun spaces, right? But at the same time, there's work going on in the building that oh, yeah. benefits the community. So that combination Absolutely. of things Absolutely. Uh, it, makes it different it from just a party spot. It won't work. It wouldn't work. And then we think about it uh, in this way, too, um, from a building standpoint, right? We rent this space out to keep 
the cost for tenants mm. down. Mm -hmm. We rent this space to keep the lights on. We mm. rent this space to make sure that it is for the community, but then it also benefits those nonprofits and small businesses in the building. Yeah. Yeah. Is that how the pizza comes in? Uh, ah. is, that, is that a many spot too? <laughs> so the pizza, so Termina's Pizza is also here. Um, they act as caterers sometimes yeah. for the events going okay. on and, and folks in the building, of course. But um, they're also black-owned, family-owned business. Mm. Um, although a franchise, it still is owned by a uh, minority-owned business. So. so it's available to the community as well as to the people in Oh my in gosh, here. yes. And you should yeah. see the door dashers that come in like, yeah. what kind of place <laughs> have I entered? And I'm like, come on Let's in. Let's take a look at that. I sure. want to see that. So um, it's cool because you get to see them making the dough. Yeah. <laughs> Literally and figuratively, right? <laughs> <laughs> but pretty cool to see them do that. Um, and then her kids are really who's here now. And I say kids, but um, in their 20s and one graduated high school. So mm. now they're they're taking over the business. It's Tormina's? Tormina's. Tormina's. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. And um, the really neat thing, so we talk about small businesses, but we're also talking about how do you give back to the community and how are you a part of this community. It's not just because they're here and they're black owned business and family owned business. That's great. Yeah. Um, but in, in addition to that, they also um, then have a partnership where they bring in high school students mm. and teach them the business okay. of and how to run a small business, yeah. right? Um, customer service, yeah. right? How do you learn that? That's yeah. a, sometimes it's an innate skill, but most of the time it has to be taught, yeah. right? Okay. Um, so amazing, amazing relationship uh, with the community in, in that Great. respect. Yeah, okay. they also deliver. Yeah, all <laughs> so, right. Pretty cool. I haven't gotten the pizza yet, but I'm gonna get some. Oh my gosh. These are, these are our community members. So we just talked about Termina's Pizza. This is the owner of Termina's mm. Pizza. We talk about Dirty Central being behind us, um, literally being behind us, but we're behind them, pushing them. But this is the principal, uh, Principal Webb uh, over at Dirty. Dirty Central because they're K-12. Mm. Um, so the, all of these folks who you see up here are community members. Yeah. Um, Charles is part of our Life Remodel Youth Alliance. So mm. everything that we do, we can't just do just because. We have to do it because it has to make sense. Mm -hmm. um, Charles lives in the neighborhood. He goes to Central. He knows exactly what we're talking about when we say, what does this community need? And what do kids, what do youth have to say about it? Mm -hmm. um, and so for being a part of Life Remodel, he then gets to decide and we'll go take a look at the dive yeah. um, of, of how and what goes on there as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's nice to see the community members celebrate it. Oh my gosh, Teresa is amazing. She is a Detroit firefighter. Mm. Um, she drives the big rig, as a matter of fact. Mm. And she also lives very close to the building. Mm. Um, she also has a business, had two here. Boutique was here, but she moved it to be next to a male clothier. Um, and then also she has the recess room upstairs as a convenience store. Okay. <laughs> so um, we'll talk a little bit about a different space um, in a little bit, but I wanted to bring you down this way. Um, so this is officially the selfie hallway, but <laughs> it was also painted this way not to like trip you out and think which pill, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, or my, my Willy Wonka. Um, <laughs> but it was a way of really making sure that uh, kids knew it was a fun space. You are standing on what used to be um, half of the boys' locker room, and we'll kind of talk about that in a minute. I tell people just where they are mm. logistically to remind you that you're just not in the office building. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so this particular uh, space was painted by uh, our facilities manager, and then we partner with Detroit at Work, who's also here as our tenant. And um, they provide uh, us with a worker that maybe is a returning citizen. Um, maybe it's they needed some soft skills. Um, and so this gentleman in particular um, was a returning citizen, but also a tattoo artist. Hmm. And so he worked with Jake and then they created this amazing space. Wow. So um, just really cool partnership. Um, it's a workers in training um, and they um, really have a great program. They do some great work of those folks to just really think about like how do they come back to the workforce yeah. and maybe without like judgment right so yeah. we're welcoming them come on mm. we don't care any blemishes you have um, it doesn't matter we welcome you back into this space at least mm. right cool. all right so we're gonna walk down this space get, to, or get the selfie right <laughs> 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 so 
in a sec. <laughs> this is the old shower stall. Oh, wow. Um, we use it in a way that is um, the lounge or a flex meeting space. So hmm. we had Zoom calls. We've, you know, we've, <laughs> we've had to be tied to a, to a computer, oh, wow. right? Um, but then we think about Detroit at Work, um, who then gives folks laptops. Well, now you have your laptop, but maybe you want to come and set it all up, right? Or maybe you need to figure out how to do it. Or, or maybe your space isn't um, able to occupy all three of you at once. And you come down here to work and your partners are upstairs. Mm. Um, and it also acts as a, um, a Wi-Fi lounge mm. for anyone. Um, and we started it because of COVID. Um, we had one here and then we uh, put one outside. So then parents can just drive up pull up, sit in their cars, sit outside on the park mm. bench, and log in yeah. to, to virtual La La Land yeah. school, right? Wow. <laughs> so we've had to think about what does the community need, yeah. need at all times. It yeah. doesn't stop, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, the printer is here also for our tenants. Again, thinking about it from a small business and a, um, a nonprofit standpoint, I can't afford a big old giant printer, right? Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? And so Life Remodeled, um, whenever we get donations in, we, we, we contact all of our tenants like, hey, we've got printers, but we also provide this one here mm. um, for our tenants yeah. as well. I like the soap dishes. Don't you like that? And the <laughs> fact that we could have covered it up, yeah. but chose not to. Yeah. Right? Are those the original soap those dishes? Those are the original. <laughs> wow. They held up pretty well. Yeah, they made <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Um, this is a pretty cool space. Um, so as a, a former classroom teacher and the liaison, thinking about my students who didn't come to school, who are not uh, well kept, right? Yeah. Um, thinking about their needs. Um, so then uh, Life Remodeled uh, said, okay, what can we do? Um, we then thought about Dirty Central, again, that partnership at all times, yeah. um, and thinking about what do student, students need? Well, they wear uniforms, right? Mm -hmm. So if I can only afford one, Mm. I'm aware as yeah. often as I have to yeah. and then um, but students can come over they can bring their backpacks um, no questions asked wow. uh, Blue Cross Complete is our tenant here as well mm -hmm. but they also provide all the soap as well yeah yeah amazing no cost uh, there's yeah. zero cost to it um, the only thing that we just ask is that they just keep it nice and clean yeah yeah well yeah. again it's the kind of thing where it seems like a student who is so inclined can almost be like independent. Yes. This is their home. They yes. can do what they need to do to, right. to be successful. Well, I, I, is that where schools are? Yeah. Is a, is a hub. It's yeah. a community hub. It's that. It's that space where not only do students. There's, well, we're supposed to make students feel really great and warm and loved and welcomed, yeah. but also families. And I say families, not just parents, because we're not just talking about parents, right? We're talking generational folks who are taking care of little tiny kids now. Yeah. Um, so thinking about it in that sense. Yes, yeah. we are still serving like our school and serving and partnering with the school to make sure we can support their needs as well. Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, this is one of my favorite spots. I got Oh, the pool. Yeah, let me hit the lights. <laughs> I got to turn all the lights on. <laughs> oh. Let's take a little dip. Yeah, please do. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Come on in. The water is great. Uh, <laughs> the water is great. So, um, former pool. Yeah. Uh, I like to have folks guess, but I think you could probably guess. Um, and so this is the dive. It's that mm. for many reasons to dive into new opportunities mm -hmm. um, and obviously a nod to the pool. I first got here and I have to be very honest. I was upset. I was upset because the pool was gone. Mm. I am a swimmer. Mm. I learned at uh, Coleman A. Young. And I'm like, what is going to happen to my kids, right? My kids, my community kids. And um, it was explained to me, listen, the, the donor wanted to make sure that, that it stayed open. But we're talking about liability. We're talking about insurance. We're talking about we couldn't even have walked back here if there were no safety precautions or a lifeguard, mm. right? So then I'm like, okay, okay, I can't be too mad. Mm. But to take lemons and to make lemonade, this is an amazing space. Mm. So second space that is rentable. So this is open to the community as well. Oh, wow. Birthday parties. Okay. I told you the mayor was also in this space. Um, and just an amazing space to think about 
gosh, it was a fifth, <laughs> five year old birthday party here and that was really cool. Um, we had chess here every Friday. Um, Suzuki Violin is here. Mm. Um, when we talk about using, like I said, a hall, or someone's space, Suzuki Violin comes, they're one of our pop-up programs. They don't have a space here, like office space, mm. but they just needed a space space. So if you're working from home and maybe you just need an event space, mm -hmm. this would work perfect, especially yeah. if you're serving our community. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that then, you know, brings a whole nother lens for us. Like, oh, yeah. you're providing it for our African-American young students who are in the neighborhood at a sliding rate or free? Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So I showed you Charles on the board, yeah. right? So Charles is part of that LRYA um, and they decided what they wanted this to look like. And they voted that they wanted to keep it looking like water. Mm -hmm. And they wanted the, um, you know, the top part to also replicate water or clouds. Yeah. So we didn't make that choice for them. They did. Is this actually filled in? It is filled so that's in. That's a lot of tons concrete. and tons oh, of concrete. My goodness. Yeah. So think about it this way too. When someone showed me the pictures, um, we had some stuff on, on hand, right? Yeah. So we're doing all kinds of work around the building, but we also then had to fill it up even more. So yeah. yeah. Man, oh man. Yeah. No, I know, but pretty cool <laughs> space. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Um, so welcome to the boys' locker room. <laughs> Yeah, pretty cool. So um, it is, we're in the arcade. When I told you about some of the spaces that are available for the community to rent, mm -hmm. this was not included in one of those mm. spaces. It is not a rentable space on purpose. So Life for Model did a survey. What do you need in the neighborhood? What do you want to see, right? Some of those things were, I can't afford to take my kids anywhere. I don't have transportation to do so. I live right around the corner. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a grandmother. I can't do those things, right? So we're standing in a space that is an incentive space, but also a space available to our programs and um, tenants, right? So incentive meaning if I taught fifth grade over at Derby and I said, you know what? If we do wonderful on this test, everybody can go over and we'll get pizza party and we'll have game night. Awesome, right? Incentive meaning positive behavior. You know, you, you did so well. Um, you, you, you went a whole week without getting that red ticket. That's great. Let's make sure we celebrate. Mm. So for, for folks over at Durfee Central, that's an amazing carrot, right? Mm. Um, sometimes as students, they need that. They need that, you know, outside extra. They don't have it within sometimes, but mm -hmm. that little carrot that's on the outside to say, okay, I'm going to work hard to do better. Mm -hmm. right? And to see this and be able to come over free, yeah. it's amazing. It's around the corner. Mm. Right. Um, the second way we use it are for programs and tenants in the building. So say like um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, um, they're a mentorship program here. Mm. Pretty cool and amazing work that they do. And I'm a big but I can't afford to spin, spin, spin. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna bring my littles here. Mm. We have a game night, celebration, awesome time, okay. right? Um, okay, there's a third way we use it and that's for the adults in the building, <laughs> right? Huh. What if we need a brain break? So we have like Beyond Basics who does um, literacy virtually, right? Mm. You're online all day, mm -hmm. you need a break too, yeah. right? Um, I will also share that Chris Lambert is very competitive I will say he owns all the trophies for Life Remodeled right now because he <laughs> keeps beating us all on all the mm. games. Um, <laughs> at so, everything. At everything. Mm. So we were here later in the day before and there's yeah. a lot of activity. Oh, so, yeah. But what's the, what's the main activity time? I mean, the kids are in school right now. They right? are, right. right. So, so right, that was part of the reason why the seniors couldn't, couldn't uh, continue their employment. Yeah. Um, so uh, about three, three o'clock um, from about That's three thing, to yeah. five, um, there's an influx. Yeah. Um, but there's also programming that's going on here and then let's say um, on the third floor, we have a Metro Detroit Youth Club. So um, they do after school programming, tutoring, um, and they're here as soon as kids get out of school mm -hmm. until I think six o'clock. Yeah. And um, 
again, you know, they yeah. also can utilize this space as well. Hey, yeah. we're going to come down for 30 minutes just to give kids a break. They've been in school. Um, they talked about it yesterday, as a matter of fact, and so they want to be on the schedule to make that happen. Yeah. yeah. So this center has been here for a few years now. What, yeah. four or five years? 2015 is when students uh, shifted over to uh, Central. Yeah. And then about 2017 is when we opened officially with not everything being in place. Yeah. So I always yeah. want to share that with folks. It didn't look yeah. like this. Yeah. Um, so even when I came, the dive wasn't even painted. Yeah. So, yeah. So what's been the impact so far yeah. on the surrounding community? Oh, man. Uh, just numbers wise, I really am not certain, but I, I will tell you, we just had our uh, community block party and we give, you know, lots of school supplies out. Um, Oh, resources galore. Um, we do some health screenings. And to know that we really gave out 600 backpacks, right, mm -hmm. was amazing. Mm -hmm. So when we say, like, what kind of impact, just knowing that folks were in line with their, you know, kids, three, four, five kids, and they each got what they needed, mm -hmm. that's a great impact yeah. on itself. Um, so, so with that being said, um, you know, they were doing eye exams that day. Uh, um, just... A huge, huge, huge success, successful day. Mm -hmm. um, but numbers wise, I would love to know what that was as well. Um, not only for that, but um, whole, like over the past four or five, you know, six years that we've really invested our time and money yeah. into it. Um, I would love to know that. What I can say is that in May, when I got here last May, um, is when we hit 100% uh, occupancy mm. in the building. Mm. Right. So yeah. it took growth. It took time um, yeah. and it continues to take that. Um, but the impact is great because it just people keep they want to be here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, we have a place here called um, uh, Metro EHS. Occupational therapy, speech therapy, ABA therapy. I don't know where you're going to get that in the city unless you're going to like the DMC. Mm -hmm. Right. Unless you're going to the suburbs. To, yeah. to, to gain that. Um, so impact wise, again, I don't know numbers, but I know feelings. Yeah. Well, I could see too where yeah. developers seeing this kind of a space in the community, yeah. seeing the positivity, yeah. it would spur them to say, okay, I can rehab this block here. Sure. I can do so I'm wondering if you're seeing more activity with the housing, oh, for the surrounding sure. housing. Oh, for sure. Definitely. Um, and, and, and really, we were, we were talking about this yesterday about like our six day project, right? Um, and then how folks you know, we, we go out into the neighborhood that we that we serve and we blight removal and, and mowing grass and just knowing that they're they too then became interested in doing that, yeah, right? Yeah. I don't want to cut my neighbor's lawn. Wait, wait, we're coming to cut in you're our neighbor and we don't even live right, here, right? right? Um so so again, that kind of impact. Yeah. Right? Lasting, longevity. Um and yeah, there's definitely been some folks who are um seeing this as a great opportunity to get some real estate yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. why not why yeah. not um so i think that the next step though would be um really wanting to make sure that our neighborhood knew everything that we do here and that's challenging when we think about our demographics sometimes like mm. well am i going to go on instagram probably not Mm. Am I going to go on Facebook? I'm not going to go on Facebook unless it's for business reasons, yeah, right? So yeah. I have LinkedIn, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, we have grandparents who are raising little ones. Are they going to go on? Mm. So I think when we talk about um, impact, but also like how to get the word out, that it, that in itself has become like, okay, what do we do? Mm. Um, our, we, we got a brand new director of marketing. She, she hadn't been here before. Chris had been the director of marketing, right? So it was mm. his baby and saw this mm -hmm. way through. And um, also our uh, director of philanthropy, she, she did a lot of our marketing. So I, I'm telling you, I, I know that they'll be great when she finally says, okay, this is what we're doing. This is how it works. And um, we've got some great feedback from Deloitte um, as well. And they're helping us to, to understand what that means as a small nonprofit to get the word out about everything mm. we do. Yeah. Right. Um, those are real life situations of a, of a, of a little organization, yeah. you know, All right. important for those entrepreneurs. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Um, Tiki, um, she's the Detroit firefighter I, I showed mm -hmm. you on the wall. And so um, the recess room, 
is her baby, right? Mm. So she um, also sells clothing, so you'll see those items. So a convenience store mm -hmm. is what it is. But you're actually standing in the principal's office. Wow. Mm. Pretty now, this cool. This looks like some gym floor. Ha ha, right? So pretty cool. We saw a little bit downstairs in the arcade, but also here as well. I think it looks like a bowling alley floor, but mm. it's kind of mm -hmm. cool. Not wasting it, right? Yeah. I knew we needed a gym floor but not wasting what we had here as well. Mm -hmm. um, so principal's office, cool, cool, cool space. Uh, when you come out the front door, you actually are standing right uh, underneath this space. Good morning. Hi. How you doing? Good morning. <laughs> um, Got the big safe. The safe. So I had an alum come and he said, do you know why that's here? And I said, well, no. I mean, you know, this is the principal's office. And it's not just a little safe, it's a huge storeroom. That's what they mm. use it for, is her storage room. And he said it was actually for payroll. Mm. Oh, so he right. said depression, right? We're thinking about uh, where people don't go to the banks. Yeah. So the monies, oh, all the goodness. monies. <laughs> <laughs> all the monies are there. Wow. Yeah, I know. I know. To a middle school, and my middle school did not look like this. This is crazy for a middle school. The gym is amazing, and this is that third space that is available for rent. Mm, okay. Um, we do. We've seen fundraisers spectator here. Spectator spots. Yep, spectator spots. That's a little basketball red. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> uh, I can't get. I can't get up like <laughs> I used to. You got. You got to make sure that this. this yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, I have a very tall daughter, and I tell her that too. Just, just do this. Yeah. Thing. Right. <laughs> Just get your, get your layup up. good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in the gym, how do we utilize this space? So we have open gym here, and it's amazing time because mm. then um, students from Durfee Central, families, you have a safe environment, free to now bring your family. Mm. So on Saturdays from 12 to 4, one of our tenants, um, his name is Jay Bell, and he is a photographer. So he is an entrepreneur as well. Mm. And he saw an opportunity to say, okay, I want kids to come here and, and be able to, to chill out and talk to me if they want to or, you know, or just have a space. Mm. So that happens on Saturdays. And then we also have an open gym for 16 up young African uh, males in particular um, through our Better Men Outreach Program and, and um, organization here. And it's amazing. Mm. Their turnout, because it's a pathway, mm -hmm. right? You're homeless, but you yeah. know that we're doing this. Okay, great. Come on in. Okay, mm. you don't want to talk about it. That's cool. But are you hungry? Mm. Do you want something to eat? Um, oh, you do need a job for tomorrow? Great. I'll, I'll, I'll set it up. So mm. that's how they work and operate too. Mm. Again, a safe space to be in. Wow. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about the wall downstairs and I said that was really cool. Yeah. And it is, and it, it's meaningful. And obviously it helps the building and helps the community. Um, this one in particular <laughs> is on the old flooring as well. It's in the, you know, the skyline of Detroit. I'm a mm. little older, so it's the Renson, not the GM. <laughs> and, <laughs> and these are all donors who decided to give $10 or more mm. just to get the floor redone in the gym. Mm. So I don't say that it's like, you know, a, a better situation, but it's more meaningful to me and impactful. We talked mm -hmm. about that. This is a visual, you know, for that. And it's um, a broader group. Right? And not just names of uh, organizations. These are individuals who decided yeah. to give. Um, yeah. So pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. And one of my favorite pieces of art in the building. <laughs> huh. uh, so um, the great thing about this space is then it's empty now, right? But then Metro EHS can then utilize this space to bring kids down for occupational therapy, mm -hmm. right? Um, I told you that um, we have some mentorship programs in the building. They too can use the, the mm -hmm. um, gym to whatever they like, but usually it's for basketball. Um, and in the mornings, my favorite thing that happens is there is the legacy leaders. Those are our folks that are 55 and over through Methodist Children's Home Society, and they <laughs> they jam. Hmm. They jam to Kirk Franklin, to Beyonce, to <laughs> all in between. Hmm. Um, but they then started, and this is an amazing, amazing thing that happened. So I happened to be downstairs, and a woman came in, and she said, I'm tired of walking on Central's track. I can't do it anymore. There's, there's dogs. 
there are groups of people and I mm. don't feel safe. Mm. And I said, well, I don't know how I can do anything about that, but I can say, let me bring you down to Methodist and um, they have a senior program and maybe you can talk more about that. Mm. From that conversation, a walking group occurred. Monday through Thursday, 7.45 to mm. 9 a.m. That young lady happens to now be also employed by them. Mm. And she is a recruiter and gets more seniors involved. Okay. Since I've been here in 16 months, they went from five seniors to almost 300. Oh my goodness. Seriously, <laughs> they are in the building, yeah. <laughs> right? Wow. Um, and we talk about these folks are their 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 grandparents taking care of kids. They just want a little something to do because they're at home by themselves. Yeah. Um, they just want to have meaning. They want to give back. Um, it's amazing. It's mm. an amazing program, and they do field trips and um, really just some great stuff that happens mm. there. But yeah. so they are jamming here. Uh, yeah. If you want to come Monday yeah. through Thursday, anytime they welcome you. <laughs> we we do a lot of walking, <laughs> so maybe. <laughs> So look here, so I want to get kind of the uh, lay of the land a little bit, a okay. little history. Cause I'm from Flint. I'm not from okay. Detroit. Okay. And uh, so I don't know about the, you know, all these schools sure, and everything. Sure. So first of all, who is Durfee? Gosh. Where did, where did yeah. the name come yeah. from? Yeah. So um, some digging, of course, uh, uh, Durfee, I'm a, I'm a history buff and an ELA teacher, so okay. I'm all in it. <laughs> um, so uh, Durfee was a judge. And mm. so um, that's who it's named after. I think the original name was like Durfee, like Edgar Durfee Intermediate School, mm. right? Okay. Um, it's actually on the outside of okay. the, the building somewhere. It's in stone. Mm. Um, and so he was a judge. And the reason why, and I, it touches me for so many different reasons, and I'll maybe share a little of the personal too, but um, it touches me because of the Jewish population that was here before mm. and why they built the school was because their kids were, weren't being accepted, right? Mm. In, in other scenarios, they felt like they were immigrants, right? Mm. So they felt mm. like they didn't have a place to be mm. in society. So they created this for themselves. Mm. Um, very interesting that here we are now, mm -hmm. and there were some changing of, of neighborhoods that mm -hmm. happened, right? Um, and then it became largely African Americans who mm. are here now. Okay. So this earlier was a predominantly Jewish community, oh, yes. and this school served that community. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And what year was the school built? 1927. Okay. Yeah, 1927, and and then you know, of course, we can think about like history that mm -hmm. has that has occurred and. Um, as folks decided to migrate north yeah. and, and what happened here. Um, and then it became, you know, from a mixed neighborhood to, uh, like I said, predominantly all white or all African-American. What's interesting is the turn of when you asked me about real estate, the turning of the, 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 the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, although still predominantly African-American, we have some folks who are coming in, you know, whether they graduated college mm -hmm. and they want to be close to their jobs downtown yeah. or oh, yeah. um, they know that it's crazy to own in the suburbs yeah. um, right now. So um, so we've got folks who, who are um, migrating yeah. back to the yeah. city as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and so this was the middle school. Yes. Uh, and in and, and the old days, middle school, uh, when I was growing up, middle school was seven, eight, nine, mm -hmm. right? That was junior high school. Junior high. Was this a junior high school or was it like, Gosh. you know, I don't, I don't, now it's like five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, or that's that kind I, of right. Thing. My daughters are, they go to one that's a fourth through eighth, yeah. right? Um, and so great question. This, this has actually changed a zillion times, right? Mm -hmm. um, there used to be Roosevelt, which was the elementary, mm -hmm. middle school, and then central for the high school. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, somewhere along the way, they knew that Roosevelt wasn't going to make it or they chose to Roosevelt to was the elementary. Right. Okay. And cool fact, I heard, I don't know why they tore it down, but I heard that there was a, uh, a tunnel that went between Roosevelt and yeah, oh, and wow. Central. So I'm like, gosh, I would have kept that one. That would have yeah. been cool to go through. Um, and so once that happened, then this became, um, a gentleman told me yesterday, he goes, yeah, I remember coming to kindergarten here. Well, I didn't oh. even know that kindergarten was oh, even wow. here, right? Okay. Um, so many changes occurred, but middle from what I understood was um, fifth through eighth. Yeah. Um, and then I think it changed from sixth through eighth. So they had okay. these changes that occurred enrollment, yeah. you know, population, growth. So where is the middle school now? So they are K through 12 over at, over at Central. Oh, okay. And then, you know, the crazy thing is a, a, another alum came and she told me she remembers being in pods 
outside mm. because there was there was a grand amount of students here, mm. right? So yeah. interesting, so so yeah. interesting. But so it's uh, K through 12 in the same building. Yes, and I told you, I showed you Principal Webb, um, and she although has some you know great staff, she is the only principal. Mm. from both sides wow. I know um, but really cool how they how they how they manage that yeah. um, and how many students gosh you know I, I really want to I want to know what they are right now I wonder if we can pop our heads into life remodeled and ask some questions okay. to those folks yeah. who are in there